Audio Jungle. Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike. I hope you're having a good Friday. I got another review for you. Um, this is from Mad Cave. This is um, Nottingham issue number four. This is the second printing. In case you're, you know, curious about the cover, um, I don't care about the printings. I just wanted the story so I could read it and also review it for y'all. Um, if you are not caught up in this, this story or you don't have this comic, I have reviewed uh, in great detail the, the previous issues. Um, I think the first video is a one and two uh, collected type of uh, issue. Um, but um, nonetheless, I've really enjoyed the story. The art, um, basically it is a retelling of Robin Hood. You know, it's, um, we all, most everybody out there should know on one level or another one of the different variations of Robin Hood. I mean, there's been the Disney, the Kevin Costner, the Man in Tights, the, you know, we're not even getting to the classic, you know, the 40s, 50s. I mean, it's an old tale, right? Um, and this is just a dark, more grown-up, um, I'd say adult version of this story. Um, and I've always liked uh, Robin Hood. Actually, um, uh, to be honest, the uh, Robin Hood, the Disney classic, is one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Um, the theme song is a song that I can whistle that I, I, I mean I love that song um, I think that opening scene is just is one of the best opening scenes of any movie to date ever um, fight me on it um, okay so anyways um, we are catching up at the story and it's kind of like a murder mystery and it's basically instead of um, you know, it's kind of told from the, the sheriff's point of view. Usually he is vo viewed as the villain in this story. is kind of our hero, and Robin Hood and the uh, Merry Man are kind of like the villain. But it only starts out that way because as the story progresses, you know, we all know that Robin Hood is, is for the, the poor, the oppressed, the, you know, he's stealing from the rich and giving to the, the poor kind of thing. And it's kind of the same mentality here. Um, and of course, in that scenario, you know, if you progress with the storyline and all those classic Robin, it's, a, it's always almost like a rebellion type of story that they're trying to go against the king because there's only a few of, of the nobility living nice and everybody else is living at this poverty status and that's what starts Robin Hood uh, stealing from the rich, giving to the poor kind of thing. Um, him being, I think, in most of the stories, being a nobility himself and not liking how, you know, um, England is at that time. And of course, we know it's usually because in that story, it's because the king is away and he's not really there to lead his land. It's some other guy, you know, that's uh, causing all the, the bad stuff. Um, but again, in this story, we are following Sheriff Blackthorn, and he is kind of the good guy. And it's a murder mystery. He's trying to figure out who killed some people within the castle of Nottingham. Um, I don't know if that's the castle name, but I'm going to call it that. I'm bad with names. Um, in his murder mystery things, we have found out that the killer is a left-handed killer. Um, he has left like the, the brooch at one of the, um, the murder scenes, and that's kind of most of the evidence that they have to go on. Um, they, he has come to a wall in his investigation with the killer fleeting, you know, in the last issue, he, he fled to a, a monastery and was protected uh, by sanctuary rites. And um, even then, he ended up, like, I think, hanging himself anyways. So, I mean, the, he just, the one lead that he had kind of disappeared kind of thing. So, at this point in the story, the sheriff is going back to the current lord of the castle and telling him, hey, I, I failed, you know, I don't know where to go. And the lord tells him, hey, well, we're going to come up with this... Um, you know, we're going to come up with a tournament and uh, basically try and, you know, trick uh, Robin Hood into revealing himself or at least maybe the Merry Men. The sheriff really stating that it's not that good of a plan that because um, we've seen as the story progressed because it starts out with a small band of, uh, you know, uh, Robin Hood and his Merry Man and most of the times we haven't even seen Robin Hood. It's just been his Merry Man. But as the story has progressed, we've seen that their numbers are many, not just a few like, like in the beginning of the story. Um, but Sheriff also stating that the band of Merry Men and Robin Hood are willing to kill for their cause raises more flags than, you know, and them letting him not only in the courts of the castle, but so close to all the nobility that they're supposed to be protecting raises a lot of red flags, right? 
Um, but the Lord's still stating that it's a good idea, that he believes that most men are, are moved by, you know, their weight in gold kind of thing and, and decides to do the tournament anyways. I love that they did add the tournament in this. It's always one of my favorite parts of the Robin Hood story. Robin Hood, you know, kind of creeping in in, in the disguise and tricking everybody and, and even still getting away. Um, and it's kind of the same thing. As it's going on, as this is going on, sorry, um, <clears throat> you know, the Mary Manor, of course, it is a trap, and they are um, using this opportunity to sneak into the tournament, and not only that, but a lot of the Mary Men. Um, while this is going on, there is a high suspicion that, that Maid Marion is uh, affiliated with Robin Hood and the Mary Men, and uh, for the most part, us, the readers, and the sheriff also suspect her as being one of the, you know, the main, you know, murder. Uh, <clears throat> you know, um, the suspects in the case. Um, we catch up where they start up like a joust, a melee mission, but it does get into finally an archery session. And we do get to see uh, Sir Robert Loxley, which in most story turns out to be Robin Hood. Um, in this story, I think he is Robin Hood, but we just haven't got that confirmation yet. Um, not that I can remember. But he does show up in the tournament, and of course he shoots with his left hand, and the sheriff is like, yes, that's him, I knew it all along. But then right here, the you know, Sir Robert he switches up, and he shoots with his right hand. Um, and again, in the story, they all, all, you know, I think by this point, it's like three of his shots, and they all hit bullseye, but it does throw a wrench in the sheriff's plan of thinking, because he was looking for a left-handed killer, and Robert used both hands. Um, at the same moment that the wrench is thrown into the sheriff's plans, we see that the merry man, they, they, you know, bust out of their, you know, their trap and start killing everybody that they can get a hold of, that their, you know, guards or nobility or anybody that's attached to, you know, um, basically Nottingham. And um, the sheriff at this time telling the lord and everybody of nobility that they need to get the hell out of there. Of course, the lord's more worried about you know, the gold and stuff like that, and eventually the sheriff does persuade the lord to start moving and get the fuck out of there, um, you know, to run to the castle for their lives, trying to, you know, as they go along, grab as many guards to help protect Maid Mary and the lord and the other, you know, rich nobility and stuff like that. <clears throat> and basically at this point, they kind of do this whole 300 thing where like, you know, Little John does appear. Um, he is like, he is kind of leading the rebellion. You know, he does state their intentions as far as like they're going to kill everybody because they, they feel like, you know, the oppression has gone on for too long kind of thing and it's time for an uprising. Um, but they do kind of state that. They eventually come to like this 300 type thing where they do forge this like line you know, with the sheriff stating that, um, you know, not letting anybody pass, you know, kind of thing. And it does end up leading to this bridge that leads to the castle. So they are able to, you know, kind of merge out the number of merry men because as the story goes, it's just, it's just like thousands of them. There is this behind the scenes story as you're reading it. And it's the story about the sheep and the wolf. You know, of course, in that story where the, the wolf wears the sheep clothing to sneak into the flock, right? Um, I don't know if it's a writer um, like Liberty, but it, it seems like he has added on to the story, and I, I love it because he continues that story with um, the wolf, you know, hi, you know, hiding into the, the sheep's um, flock wearing the clothing, and he ends up falling asleep waiting till morning time to pounce on all these sheep. Um, the shepherd, you know, after a long day's work, comes home and is extremely hungry and ends up uh, wanting a, a massive meal and looks for the biggest sheep in his herd and ends up finding the biggest sheep and kills it and eats it. Um, but, you know, irony have it, um, it ends up being the wolf was the biggest, um, you know, sheep in, in the flock kind of thing. Um, I love that addition to the story. I don't know. I've never heard that kind of add on to the story. It might be, I don't know. But it kind of paints a bigger picture on what's going on in, in the whole kind of the story. Because as this is going on, we do see a moment where some of the, 
they, you know, Mary men do break through and they get real close to where Maid Marian um, is and she has to defend herself. Um, she ends up killing all her, you know, <clears throat> the Mary men that, that tried to attack her and stuff in, in badass fashion. And they've already hinted that she is a very score, you know, skilled swordsman and stuff like that. that the, King Richard uh, specifically trained her because she was, you know, a princess kind of thing. Um, like I said before, eventually we do get to this badass epic scene where Sheriff Blackthorn, Maid Marian, and the rest of the, you know, kind of guards that they have, which I think it, they counted around 20, you know, are kind of shoveling backwards down this bridge, trying to defend from the Merry Men. Eventually do making it into the castle gates and, and locking the gates. Of course, um, with the, I think that part being a trap too, because we get this scene right here with finally with Robin Hood, you know, standing on top of the castle gates that they just entered with all the merry men on the outside, you know, screaming Hood's name. Um, as far as I can remember, it this is the first time we've officially seen uh, Red Hood and got his his name dropped because usually they just talk about the merry men. I might be mistaken, but um, I think it's the first time. Um, now they have shown like you know, cover shots and stuff like that, but in the story, I think that's it. Um, as soon as they get in, we do see the scene with Sheriff Blackthorn, and he arrests Maid Marian, accusing, you know, accusing her of treason and murder, and that she was the secret assassin along, that we've kind of known reading the story, and that he suspected all along. Um, he kind of states that he finally realized this, uh, this information when she, you know, had to protect herself you know, while they were fleeing to the castle because she only used her left hand in the, um, in the defense that she, you know, showed everybody. On top of that, the brooch that they found earlier also happens to match her earrings that they've shown a couple, a couple times during the, um, you know, the comic, specifically, I think, in issue two. Um, and that's kind of where they lead us at, basically, you know, with her, um, you know, showing, you know, them taking her to a dungeon kind of thing and that's where they leave us off at um, but um, like I said before overall I, I'm really enjoying the story the take some of the tropes they have used um, that the progressive it reads so quick and so fluent and uh, I mean it's just an overall good comic in my in my honest opinion um, no fluff no hype no nothing it's got great art um, great story but um, that's my review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that good mumbo jumbo um, that you probably hear a million times. Thank you for clicking on my little box, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I will be back with y'all soon. Y'all have a good Friday. I hope everybody's well, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.